possibly have. Somebody may know. If you do, you may speak up. Uh, but we may uh, have a special guest uh, Wednesday night. Uh, and I know the plans are to, to ask someone. I don't know if they, uh, this opportunity has been there yet or not. But uh, we may have another person from the Western Subject Committee uh, speaking uh, as a guest in our missionary service Wednesday night. And uh, so you don't want to, uh, to miss that. Uh, thank you for responding uh, to our insurance. So uh, you see this in the bulletin. And so we not only have enough to uh, pay our insurance that's due in the middle of February, uh, but in addition to that, uh, we already have a, $180 in pledges uh, toward the next six months. So thank, thank the Lord and may God bless you. Uh, for that. Praise the Lord. Uh, now, uh, we're going to uh, continue this morning uh, in 1 uh, Corinthians. And we're in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Our main text uh, being 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 3, verse uh, 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's uh, building. Now, uh, I see an outline in this verse for most of the uh, whole chapter. And uh, before I get started into preaching, you may want to take a few notes uh, outline-wise here. I have four uh, main points in outlining 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, one is God's laborers, uh, verses 1 through 6. Uh, two, uh, God's husbandry, uh, verses 6 uh, through 9b. Three, God's building, verses 9c through 17. And then I've had a, a fourth one, I believe fits real well is God's glory, uh, verses 18 through 22. Uh, all this, uh, I believe, can be put under uh, the topic, labors together with God. And uh, last week, concerning God's labors, we shared with you from the scripture concerning the apostle Paul, also Apollos. Uh, and so if you want this in outline form, uh, for point one, God's labors, uh, A, Paul, uh, B, Apollos, C, every man, all this straight from the scripture, D, the Lord, and then uh, E, in relation to God's labors, uh, is uh, judgment. So uh, we've covered uh, Paul, Apollos, uh, every man, and so we come down to uh, uh, the Lord. Uh, verse 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. Who then is Apollo, or who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Hallelujah. So we are laborers together with God. Now, uh, this has to do with teamwork. And I want to be on the right team, don't you? Uh, maybe, maybe that's a good word to use on, on this particular day is team. Someone has made an acrostic of that word team, T-E-A-M, as together everyone accomplishes more. Can we say that concerning a team? Uh, repeat after me. Together, together everyone, everyone accomplishes, accomplishes more. more. And the church said, Amen. Amen. But we are laborers together with God. The psalmist David said in the 127th Psalm, verse 1, except the Lord build a house. Yes. 
They labor in vain uh, that uh, build it. Uh, we read these verses that said, God uh, giveth the increase. We read in uh, I, a prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 7, a prophecy of, of the Messiah, the, uh, a child that would uh, uh, be given, the, the, uh, the son, uh, or the child that would be born, the son that would be given. Uh, Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 7, said of him, of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. We can't do it without God. Uh, that this is not just some man-made organization or, uh, or, or plan. Uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church of God. Amen. Uh, the biggest business in the world is God's business. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, we, uh, he is to be in charge. And, uh, it's gonna, uh, in order to do the work, uh, it's going to take the zeal of the Lord of hosts uh, to perform it. Uh, the prophet Zechariah uh, said in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith uh, the Lord of hosts. And we know that was talking about the rebuilding of the temple, a, a type and shadow uh, of the building of the church of God uh, in these last days. It can't be done. Uh, because uh, just mighty men or those pictured as, as powerful men uh, except uh, as they are anointed uh, uh, by uh, the Holy Ghost. Not by might, not by spirit, but, uh, or not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The psalmist said in another place, the 124th Psalm, verse 1, uh, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Now may Israel say, verse 2, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Uh, thank God uh, if the Lord is on your side or you're on the Lord's side, that means you are on the winning side. Yes. Praise God. There, this uh, uh, super... A game that's going on today, the, the football game. People are betting all kind of money as to which team will lose, which team will, uh, will win. But I, I tell you, what I'm talking about this morning, this team I'm talking about, there's no question. It's already settled. Uh, uh, I've, I've already read about the end of the game. Hallelujah. And I know who's won. And if you're on the Lord's side, you're on the winning side. Amen. Praise God. The psalmist said in the 118th Psalm, verse 6, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Uh, my, it, it, it don't matter how big those fellows are uh, on the other side that, that's coming against you. If, if, uh, if the Lord is on your side, you don't have anything to fear. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Old Testament is just full. Uh, if, if you think it's a long time to get through 1 Corinthians the way I'm preaching it, uh, you go through the Old Testament and preach about all the examples of what happens when God is on your side. And I, I'd like to uh, uh, maybe refer to one or two, maybe three of, of these. But uh, for instance, in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, 2 Chronicles chapter 14, and I don't know why in all these years, uh, a Bible study and preaching about 50 years that my attention has not been drawn more as to how large these armies were in Second Corinth in Second Chronicles chapter 14 beginning verse 2 I want to 
tell you first about the revival that had took place under King Nebuchadnezzar. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut the groves. Uh, I challenge you to uh, read the whole chapter here because it's all good about this revival. But in verse 8 we, we read, And Asa had an army of men that bear targets and spears out of Judah, 300,000. And out of Benjamin that bear shields and drew bows, 204 score thousand. So he had a total of 580,000 men in his army under King Asa and this great revival that had just took place. But we read in verse 9, and there came out against them Azariah the Ethiopian with a host of a thousand thousand. Now you know how many that is. A million man army coming against 580,000 outnumbered them uh, almost two uh, to one. And then having the privilege to, to visit the Holy Land, uh, I, I saw from the mountaintops where you could see uh, a huge uh, plains big enough to hold uh, uh, such uh, armies and uh, even larger armies spoken of in the book of Revelation where battles are to be fought uh, yet uh, very soon in the near future. Uh, there on, on those uh, uh, fields. And it said, Then Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley uh, of Zophatha uh, at uh, Marasha. Uh, now, these Old Testament words, I want to give you a lesson in how to pronounce them. Fast. Fast. <laughs> Amen. And Asa said unto the Lord his God, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Praise Ethiopians fled. Praise Hallelujah. I, I love that uh, a song. Uh, well, some may not have heard that. It was real popular, I guess, back in the 60s, but it has revived several times since then. Uh, uh, that, that song, Little David. The battle's not mine. The battle uh, is the Lord's. Glory to God. But that's what David said when faced with that big giant, uh, uh, Goliath. He recognized that uh, if the victory was won, it would be a God uh, that wins it. Uh, I, I pulled this one out. I couldn't uh, just pass by this. Ezekiel chapter 37. This is about the valley of dry bones. Oh. Verses 13 and 14. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. When I have opened your graves, mm -hmm. O oh my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Mm -hmm. Oh God, give us revival. Can we say amen? amen. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall have place in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and perform it, saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But my, uh, anything great that's done that results in victory over the enemy, but it will be God that, that does it. We can't claim the glory or the honor, but we will be defeated. We will be on the losing side. Our team will lose. I guarantee it. Unless that we are laborers together with God. Hallelujah. And then I can predict the outcome 
uh, not, not of a game, but uh, of the spiritual war. Hallelujah. And that is we will win mm -hmm. yeah. if the Lord is on uh, our side. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, uh, my, the, the whole team uh, can uh, ha have confidence. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and our, our number one quarterback uh, to uh, carry the ball right on to the goal line. Praise God. And, uh, but it's going to require teamwork in order for that to happen. Isaiah chapter 48, uh, verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. Amen. Praise God. Our quarterback's not going to get too, too tired. God. He's not going to get uh, too thirsty. Uh, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. Verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yeah, Hallelujah. Being labors to God. Uh, uh, I start to say it's the secret of success for the church of God, but it's not a secret. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word boldly proclaims it. Uh, we, we know of what the a key to victory is. And we know what will result in defeat. Jesus said in John 15 and 5, Without me, ye can do nothing. Hallelujah. Now, before Jesus ascended back to the Father, he gave the great commission. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 and 19. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The task that has been assigned to the church of God to go into all the world and preach the gospel and to teach, to observe of all things. It cannot be accomplished. It cannot be done. If it were not for the promises of God, as Jesus said, all power is given unto me and I will go with you. I will be with you always. Labors together with God. Mm -hmm. Now, as you've heard me share many times, I, I believe this great commission uh, is given in uh, five, at least five different forms. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and also uh, in Acts. But there, uh, in Acts 16, you'll find the command to go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, Mark 16. Mark chapter 16. And then it said in verse 20, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Hallelujah. And I like the last word of that verse that said, Amen. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So this, this is what's going to be our success in doing the work of the church of God today is the Lord working with us and confirming his word with signs following. A similar statement is made in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost with, according to his will. 
Praise God. We see this in action in the early church. As Paul and Barnabas went on their first missionary journey. And there they come afterwards to Antioch. And we read in Acts chapter 14 verse 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them. And how he had opened the door of the faith unto the Gentiles. Paul gets back from his first uh, missionary journey, and I'm going to say this with tongue in cheek, because it certainly didn't happen this way. But Paul says, my, 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 I did such great things. Everywhere I went, I, I preached so good and so powerful. There were just hundreds of uh, thousands of people uh, that accepted the message. They, uh, you know, I, 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 I. And then maybe Barnabas gets in on that and says, no, we, 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 we. <laughs> uh -huh. No, it didn't happen that way. When they came back and they gave uh, their uh, report, they rehearsed all that God had done with them. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. Labors together with yeah. God. They gave God the glory. They gave God the honor. They gave Him the praise. It was God who had opened up the door yeah. of faith right. to, uh, unto the Gentiles. A little later on, we read of the first assembly of the church of God and similar reports being given. In Acts chapter 15, verse 4, and then again in verse 12, and when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. Verse 12, then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, oh, let me tell you, we're partners with God. We've been assigned a task to do. The church of God cannot accomplish this mission but without the power of the Holy Ghost working in us and through us and among us. Oh, God, empower the church today with a fresh anointing, with the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, let us see the signs, the wonders, the miracles, hallelujah, the following of the preaching of, of God's truth. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Hallelujah. Paul made other missionary journeys. Second missionary journey, the third missionary journey. Until the time comes that he was to go to Rome and be put in chains. And uh, some believe that even after some of his imprisonment, uh, that he went other places. Some say uh, maybe he went to Spain and uh, uh, this kind of thing. But after his third missionary journey, we read in Acts chapter 21, verse 19. And he said, and when he had saluted them, he declared particularly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah, I love it. He went into detail. He didn't want to leave anything out. He was one excited man. Praise the Lord. Because of all God had, had done. He declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. So he went to Rome and he was put in prison. There he wrote many letters. One of these letters to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 13. Paul wrote from prison and he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's where our strength comes from. That's where our power comes from. Oh, we will grow weary. We will faint unless uh, we are connected with the, to the power source, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and we have the anointing uh, power of the Holy Ghost and His uh, working among us. But thank God that uh, Jesus said, and ye shall receive power Amen. after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my uh, witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, God poured out upon us. But give us that new zeal of the Lord that will perform the work. Let us have that same excitement that the apostle of Paul had. And give God the glory for it all. We can be victorious. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 tells us. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God. To the pulling down of the strong doors. It doesn't, uh, my, my, my. Uh, is it a marine slogan? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe not. That said, the bigger they come, uh, the harder they fall. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I don't, I'm not, oh, God help me, fill, fill me with faith because I, uh, I almost hesitate to, to say this, to say to the devil, bring them on. <laughs> but you see, whether I say that or not, he's still going to do it. Yes, yes, but the bigger they come, the harder they fall. Uh -huh. Now, I, I, I tell you, without God being with us, Amen. We'd have we'd have cause to fear to say such a thing. Amen. <laughs> but if if we're going to give God the honor, the glory, mm -hmm. praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> the bigger those are who fall, if God is in it, the greater glory to His name. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, uh, I guess he had a balance uh, to this statement. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything is of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, the Lord. who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 through 10. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Praise God. We want to abound to every good work. We want to do the work of God, uh, to accomplish uh, the, the task. And we have a God that's big enough, hallelujah, uh, to give us whatever we need, all grace, all of his gifts that come from him uh, 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 in abundance toward us, hallelujah. Abounding grace will result in abounding work being done. Yeah. Amen. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower of both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed grown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now notice these last two passages that I read are from 2 Corinthians, written to this same church in Paul's second letter to the church of God at Corinth. Even so, he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, we then as workers together with him beseech you that ye receive not the grace of God. Of God in 
Bang. Yes. <coughs> Most often we hear that word grace. We think of amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And I believe that should come first and foremost to our mind. But really that word grace refers to every gift yes. that God uh, uh, gives. Mm -hmm. And God had made uh, so much provision in his gifts to enable the church of God at Corinth to do the work. Now had they received this grace in vain to where it would not accomplish anything at all? Paul said, we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Every gift that God has given, every gift of the Spirit The anointing power, that power that comes with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not, it, it's all going to be of no avail. It's going to be in vain unless that we are workers together with Him. Let, let us receive what God has given. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, He's provided such wonderful things. Praise God, if you're saved, you're not sanctified, don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's for you. And even the gifts of the Spirit. The Bible said, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Uh, uh, not, oh God, give me the gift of healing. But God, let me get close enough to you to where the Holy Ghost can do whatever He wants to through me. Hallelujah. And operate whatever gift He chooses. In conclusion, Romans chapter 8. A lot of verses here we could read, but beginning in verse 31, uh, with uh, select verses, I challenge you to, to read the whole context here from uh, verses 31 right on through the end of, end of the chapter. What shall we say? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 32, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You mean God's going to give his son to die for the whole world? Even those who had not yet been born in, in Jesus' time. And then not empower his church and be with us. Work with us uh, uh, to, uh, to get the work done. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? Verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Could we all say through him? Through him. We're more than conquerors through him. If God be for us, who can be against us? Would you stand please? Now, Almighty God, we thank you for your words here today. We thank you for the glorious promises of your presence and 